مولانا ابي القاسم محمد وعلى اهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اما بعد سلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته among the few things which are remaining which will invalidate our fast there are certain things which are in the minds of many people one of them is visiting a dentist whether it is allowed to have your tooth extracted or treated by a dentist while you are fasting now according to ayatullah al-khoi and all the ulama there are certain things which are makruh while we are fasting makruh meaning it does not invalidate the fast but it is abominable or recommended not to do one of them is to bleed by the mouth to cause the blood come out of the mouth and also to have your tooth extracted this is makruh but now let us look at the practical side of it when we visit a dentist sometimes it so happens that the treatment requires some of the water being poured into your mouth constantly a flow of water whereby it is not possible to say that the water will not go down the throat it's not possible because we have all visited the dentists and we know what happens when such a treatment occurs and if it is inevitable it we must go for the treatment then of course that fast will be batil and uh, if it can be avoided it will be avoided not because extraction of tooth will make the fast batil no because of the practical side of it when water is poured into your mouth and it is a constant flow there is no doubt that it will get down your throat second thing which ayatullah khui has said is makruh is to enter the public bath that is hammam or anywhere where you are given a steam treatment bath because hammam where water is so hot and so warm that you find steam everywhere and you then profusely sweat when you sweat profusely ayatullah says if entry into hammam for the sake of bath or for the sake of steam bath will cause weakness then of course it is makruh to enter hammam because when weakness enters then people feel that now we can't fast thirst and all that this therefore applies to sports playing tennis or playing squash or playing anything volleyball while you are fasting is not objectionable it does not in any way affect or invalidate the fast but if one is sure that after having played this is going to be his condition that he will be uh, thirsty so much that he cannot bear it that he will go so weak that fasting will become cumbersome then he must avoid playing sport the third thing which is makruh is to <coughs> have a mouth wash for nothing he just goes near the water and puts water into the mouth and has a mouth wash once twice thrice just for the sake of perhaps wetting his lips and wetting his mouth for salat that is for, for wudu whenever you want to do wudu you are allowed to have a mouth wash three times as it is sunnah but otherwise just for the sake of keeping oneself wet abath for no reason whatsoever it is makruh and it is also makruh to smell or rather to enjoy the fragrance of any fruit take an apple just enjoying because there is hunger so if you can't get at least allowed to eat at least or any grass which has got sweet smell it is makruh but that does not mean applying perfume applying perfume is not included in this you can apply perfume for salat for example in prayers it is sunnah to have that 
But this is a particular act where somebody picks up something to enjoy and through the enjoyment of that particular fragrance and aroma, he tries to soothe his hunger. That is one. It is also makruh to recite poetry while you are fasting poetry. I am not talking of film songs. I am talking of even those poetries which may be simple. Except the qasida or marthiya of Ahlul Bayt salamullah alayhim ajma'i. <coughs> it is also makruh to wear wet clothes for the sake of cooling oneself or to wet one's clothes. Just sprinkle water on the clothes. This doesn't apply to London, alhamdulillah. Not in this season at least. But you can ask those people who fast in very hot weather. Now all this is makruh. Now there are two or three things remaining about traveling. Yesterday I explained that if you have to travel and if you have a choice, please travel after Dhuhr. But if you are traveling before Dhuhr, even by five minutes earlier or even a minute, if you are traveling before Dhuhr and if you reached that Hadd al the boundary beyond, before Dhuhr, and you started traveling, your fast will be batil on that day and you will have to pay over. But let us take an example. Somebody traveled to say Leicester or Peterborough after Dhuhr. He does not want to stay or live in Peterborough or Leicester for 10 days. So he's a Musafir. If he wants to stay there for 10 days, he will fast in Leicester or more. But he wants to stay only overnight. Now early in the morning as he woke up in Leicester, he cannot fast because he's a Musafir. He's not staying there for 10 days. What we should do now, he wants to come back to London, let us say, where he lives before Dhuhr. He wants to come back before Dhuhr. So Sharia advises such a man that although you will not make a niyat of fasting while you are in Leicester or you are on your way, do not use anything which will break the fast. Don't eat, don't drink, all those things which we have so far discussed. And you enter London before Dhuhr. Once you entered the vicinity of London, the place where you live, after that hajj, that boundary, you cross the boundary, you make a niyat when you arrive that I am fasting today and your fast will be valid. Because you arrived before Dhuhr. Again, if you have traveled after Dhuhr from London, your fast is valid. But when you went to Leicester and stayed overnight, Morning you cannot fast because you are a traveler. You come back, if you wish to come back to London before Dhuhr, then you can save your fast by not using anything which will break the fast. The moment you reach here before Dhuhr, make a niya here that I am fasting Ramadan and your fast will be valid. If you arrived here after Dhuhr, then your fast has gone on that day and you will keep a qawa. Now, there can be also another way of traveling. I leave this place before Dhuhr. And I go to Luton, which is outside London. And from Luton I finish my work and come back to London before Dhuhr. And in the meantime, I did not use anything which breaks the fast the moment I return with that niya which I will make upon return, not during the suffer. Now, Ayatollah al khui has given a hint here that since you have missed out or you have broken a fast, suppose somebody traveled and could not make it, he had to travel before Dhuhr and he came back after three days, let us say. So three fasts in the meantime or two fasts, whatever, have been missed out. So when I said on the first night that one can make a wholesale niya for the whole month, that whole month has now broken. So now he has to make a niya for every day because that continuity has broken. 
as long as the continuity is there, whole month's niyat is all right. The moment one broke down, then you'll have to make niyat every night for a new fast, because the continuity has broken. <clears throat> After having said this much, inshallah, tomorrow we will discuss a very good chapter which will be pleasing for many, those who are exempted from fasting. But not all of us. But inshallah we shall be discussing those for whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His mercy has granted exemption as to they may not fast and what they should do instead. Last night we were discussing about Rabb and I'm sorry that I have not finished yet about Rabb. So about 15-20 minutes that I have at my disposal I have to discuss this so that we go further. The present world is a world which comes out with so many propositions and theories and suppositions that baffles human mind. And many Muslims, readers, thinkers, when they read those books, they feel that does Allah still exist <coughs> or do we have any importance whatsoever? Remember one thing, that there was a time when people thought that the world was the center of the universe, earth. Everything else rotated and revolved around the earth. When earth was the center of the system, human beings living in the world had importance. But gradually, after the new theories and investigations, we found out that the earth is not the center of the universe. In fact, earth moves around the other planets. So because earth lost its central position, the universe became very vast. And there are so many creations. So what does a human being represent? Nothing. Not even an iota, not even a dot. This is what the idea is. We are in the whole universe. Look at this, whatever we know of. There are things. Subhana alladhi khalaq al azwaja kullaha mimma tumbitul ardu wa min anfusihim wa mimma la ya'lamoon. Glorified is Allah who created everything in pairs. Two, two. Male and female. Masculine, feminine from that which grows from the earth, pair, and from among themselves, pair, man and woman, and also among those of whom they have no knowledge. That means there is a lot of things, a lot of things that are of which we have. Even there Allah has created the pairs. Yasin, we read every day. Mm -hmm. So when? we became totally unimportant and insignificant. Then science tried to play a new role. Men started thinking that I am just an iota. I am just a dot, perhaps even a part of a dot. Does God really know me that I exist? Does he care? This is the doubt. Does he care? When my position First of all, let us take human beings as one part. From human beings take all the nationalities and the number. Right from the day Adam salam, was sent till the day of judgment, millions and billions and billions will be born. And in that, among that whole human society, I exist. What is my importance? And does God know about it? This is the doubt. Is it not a doubt? It is a doubt. And it was created further entrenched and strengthened by the new concept of the expanding universe. That this universe is expanding every moment. So there is no limit to the expansion. Just as I am talking to you, this system is expanding. That means new constellations are born, new stars are born, new planets are born, and it is actually getting extended and expanded every, every moment. So now where am I? Eh? 
And people thought that this was a new concept. Allah in Surah Al-Wadhariyat says, وَالسَّمَاءَ بَنَيْنَاهَا بِأَيْدٍ وَإِنَّا لَمُوسِعُونَ and the heavens we created with our own power and we extend it and expand it. The concept was in Quran, wa inna la musi'un. We go on expanding it. We thought this is only science which talks. Allah in Quran talks about the expanding universe. But when the doubt came into my mind that does he know about me, then Allah answered. And we read that ayah just now in Surah Al An'am. وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّهُ With him are the keys of the unseen things. No one knows but he. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ And he knows which is on the land. And he knows that which is in the sea. وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا Not a single leaf from the tree falls, but he knows about it. Now, the falling of a leaf from a tree is much more insignificant than my existence. At least I can say that. From your existence and my existence, the falling of the leaf is totally insignificant. Allah says, I know that. وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَا رَطْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ and not a single seed which goes into the dark layers of the earth, no dry or wet, one and sundry, is recorded in the manifest book of Allah. When we know this, here, here comes the word Rabb. The meaning of Rabb is, Al Mudabbiru li umuri mamluki. One who manages the affair of those whom he owns. That means he owns me and therefore he manages my affairs. As an individual, as a group, everyone. He knows each of us. Our knowledge and his knowledge differs. He knows every one of us and you cannot manage the affair of your child if you don't know his needs. And therefore it means that he knows my needs and therefore he manages. This is the meaning of Rabb. It's very deep. That is why Allah after Allah used Rabb to make sure that it is not only a maker. Like Einstein said, I believe in God but not a designer. We say he is God and he is also a designer. He commands my destiny and your destiny. And he is the one who looks after me. This is the meaning of Rabb. And then, not only that, when I go to a doctor, I say I've got some, the doctors are sitting here, well, I say I've got some uh, infection. When I was young, or when I was ignorant, when the doctor prescribed any medicine, in those days there were no antibiotics, but then antibiotics came. You see, I used to believe that this will cure the infection. When my doctor friends told me, why it does not cure, it prevents further infection. The cure takes place by the antibodies within your body. That means your body works now to combat and fight the infection. In the meantime, we are giving you medicine to prevent so that it may not take up new infection. Is it not so? The doctors are sitting here. They have told us repeatedly that your body works, your antibodies work, and when there is no immune system, there is a problem. True? This is the meaning which Shaykh Tusi alayhi rahman al-Tibyan writes, Ar-Rabbu bimana al-Muslih. Rabb means one who mends and adjusts and repairs. In every body, he has set the law, he has set the things ready. The moment I get a cut, within three days I see it is gradually being healed up, and tissues gradually join, 
and finally I find it is ready. There is no stitch, nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done the job because he is a rough. And then Shaykh Tusalir Rahma says, وَالرَّبُّ بِمَعْنَا يَرْزُقُ مِنْ حَيْثُ نَعْلَمُ وَمِنْ حَيْثُ لَا نَعْلَمُ He is the one who provides rizq by the means we know and by the means we do not know. So early in the morning if I rise and say, Ya Rabb, oh my Rabb, I'm going to my work depending upon you. He provides. He provides from the means, means you know and from the means you do not know. And he is the only provider. I have to complete because the time is running short and there is a lot and lot to say about this. Because the ulama have explained it and Ahlul Bayt Salamullah Alayhi Majmaeen have explained <laughs> Some of my friends have said that you, you have declared that you will finish this and then you will come to other surah. You haven't even gone beyond Rabb. But I cannot go unless I explain so that we know that this book of God which is called Quran when we say it is a book of wisdom it is not an empty claim it is a claim which has got its meaning when the word rub has baffled the people because rub means iman faith not only that he exists as a maker and has forgotten us but faith that he looks after me every time i need him and if there is no concept of rub there will be no dua have you understood what i say the moment you raise your hands, it confirms that you are believing in a Rabb who is not only your maker, but he can listen to you and change your destiny if he so wills. Allahu Akbar. Uh, there used to be the Prime Minister of uh, Harun Rashid, whose name was uh, Jafar Barmaki. Baramika, famous chapter of Banobas. His father was also a prime minister, so was his son Jafar himself. Right. The mother of Jafar was a rich lady also, but she was also very generous. Very generous. It, she was so generous that the poor people of Baghdad would go to her and beg. And there wasn't anyone who came at the doorstep of Ummu Jafar, that is mother of Jafar, going without being helped. No one. One day it so happened. Now naturally, when you get some assistance from the rich who are generous, then you tend to also praise them, flatter them and things. I mean, this is human, human, human nature. Uh, two people, two beggars, one day entered together. Entered together to beg. One who was rather clever knew how to flatter. He said, he didn't say that, oh, um, ja, um, Jafar, give me something. He said, Allahumma rzuqni min fadli um, Jafar. Oh Allah. Give me some sustenance through this lady, by her grace, by her honor. The lady is listening. The other one who was blind, he said, Allahumma rzuqni min fadlik. Allah, give me with your own grace. Naturally, she was a, a human being. She thought, I must give something more to one who has taken my name. Huh? So, naturally. <clears throat> so what she did was, she asked the servant to prepare two chickens, roasted chickens, ready. In one chicken, she slipped the belly of the chicken. And inside she put ten coins, golden, Ashrafi, they call it Ashrafi. And then 
Over that she put some masala so you cannot see it. And in another one, she then thought that I must not give a chicken or anything. She put two ashrafi, removed the chicken and put only two golden coins. And she directed the servant to say, that blind fellow who said, Allahumma rzuqni min fawlik, give him two coins golden. I must. But to this one, give the, the chicken. Now when that fellow saw the chicken, and he saw it, the fellow's plate with two golden guineas, he said, <coughs> can we exchange? <coughs> he said, why? He said, you are a family man, you will take this, it is a food already cooked. You will take this home and feed your children. Well, I am Muhammad Yatima Falatakhar, unmarried. No children, no family. I will take this money. I will spend for two, three months, four months, or whatever. The fellow agreed, thinking that, yes, I have a family at home. If I take this chicken at home, they will eat. So he took the chicken and gave two to him. When he reached home, his wife was not blind. She immediately opened and saw ten coins, and she said, do you know, Umm Ja'far has been very kind to you today that she has given you something to eat and your children and also ten ashrafis. She said, yes, alhamdulillah, min fadli. <laughs> All praise to him for his grace. And this man, after two, three weeks or month, came back and said, Allah warzukli min fadli, Umm Ja'far. Umm Ja'far said, but what happened to those ten guineas? He said, I never knew. I gave it away to that blind fellow <laughs> thinking it was chicken. At that time, Shaykh al Yakbar Nahawandi in his book writes that Umm Jafar said it is only he who provides. Much as you may think of providing, it is only he because he is a Rabb. And we human beings have forgotten that he is Rabb. He gives the way you may think, you may plan, and He gives from sources you may not know. Inshallah, tomorrow the rest. Uh, we have heard the news of Haji Muhammad Jafar Sulaiman Kaku and.